One of the best ways to keep your users engaged on a native mobile app is to send push notifications. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Firebase cloud messaging with Ionic to do just that. This video is going to be a lot of fun because it ties together many of the resources in the Firebase platform, including Firestore, Cloud Functions, Messaging, and User Auth. By the end of this video, you'll have a flexible notifications feature designed to work on both iOS and Android. If you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe, and you can find all of the source code at angularfirebase.com. And join the Slack team so we can chat about your questions together. The first thing I'll do is generate a brand new Ionic app. I'm using the tabs template, but that part's completely optional. Then I'm going to go into the config.xml file and make sure that we have a custom widget ID that we can use to register our project with Firebase. We're targeting native mobile apps on the App Store, so what we're going to do is register our app on the Firebase console for both iOS and Android. For both platforms, the only thing you have to do is enter your ID and click through the steps. You don't need to download the SDK or anything like that. When you finish the process, you'll want to download your config file for both platforms and save it in the root of your Ionic project. For Android, it's the Google Services JSON file, and for iOS, it's the Google Service-info plist file. Now that our app is registered with Firebase, let's go ahead and add our dependencies. First, we have Angular Fire 2, which gives us access to the Firestore database. Then we have the Firebase Cordova plugin for Ionic, which is going to give us access to native features for iOS and Android. Follow the official install instructions for both packages, and then generate a custom Ionic provider called FCM. We'll use this provider to create a tightly integrated cross-platform notifications feature. After following these steps, you should have an app module that looks something like this. We're importing Angular Fire as well as Firestore, then adding our Firebase credentials, then we should also have the Firebase native plugin, as well as our custom FCM provider. Angular Fire goes in the import section, and our Firebase plugin goes down here in the provider section. Before we write any more code, I want to show you exactly how this feature works from the user perspective. Here we have an iPhone, and it's prompting the user to allow permission to send push notifications. When the user clicks allow, it's going to give us a token that will then be saved in the Firestore database. On that document, we'll also save the user ID so we can query all of a user's devices and send out a notification to every single device that that user has registered. If the user has their device open, it's going to bring up a toast notification on that device. When the device is open, it's the developer's responsibility to handle the notification. When the app is in the background, we'll actually send a push notification through the native device. Then I'll show you how to send push notifications directly from the Firebase console and also programmatically via cloud functions. Most of the magic is going to happen in our FCM provider, so let's go ahead and start there. First we'll bring in the Firebase plugin as well as platform and Firestore. Then we can inject these in the constructor. From there its first responsibility is to retrieve the actual token from the user, which is just permission to send notifications to this device. We'll set this up as an async function, and then we need to check for the platform that we're actually retrieving this token from. When it's Android, we just need to call our native plugin get token, and that's going to resolve with the token. When it's iOS, we have one additional step, and that is to request permission from the user. That's going to trigger the iOS pop-up modal that I showed you earlier. Then lastly, we could check to see if this is a web application and send a notification that way as well. For right now, I'm just going to leave this as a to-do because I've already covered it in episode 64, and also Angular Fire 2 is going to be releasing a cloud messaging module in the near future. So you can count on another video when that happens. Then the final thing we'll do in this method is save that token to Firestore, which is just a big long string. I'm going to extract this out into a different method, and if we don't have a token, we'll just return. Otherwise, we're going to make a reference to the devices collection in Firestore. The goal is to send a notification to every device that a user has registered, so we also want to save the user ID on this document. I'm just hard coding a test user, but in real life you'd want to use the Firebase Auth UID. And the token is just a string, so we can actually use that as the document ID. And that's important because it ensures that every device in Firestore has a unique ID. Lastly, to listen to notifications, all we have to do is call onNotificationOpen, and that returns an observable that we can use in the front end. And I should point out that specifically for native apps, you'd want to use a different method for web apps. 
Now we need to run the get token method in one of our components. For now, I'm putting it in the home component, but you could also put it in the app component or some other root level page. Inside this component, we'll want to import our FCM provider, as well as the Toast controller from Ionic and the tap operator from RxJS. Then we can inject those in the constructor. Getting the token from the user is just a matter of calling this method, and it's going to handle everything else automatically on their device. Once we have the token, we want to listen for incoming messages and handle them accordingly. Ionic makes this really easy because it has a built-in Toast notification service. So we can listen to our notifications and then use the tap operator to show a toast whenever a new message comes through. Every message will have a body and then we'll show it for three seconds and then it will automatically hide. That's an observable, so the last thing we have to do is subscribe to it. Let's go ahead and test it out by sending a message directly from the Firebase console. You'll need to have an emulator running, in this case I have Android going. Then I'm going to enter some message text and when the app's open for the first time, it should generate a device token in Firestore. Go ahead and copy that token and then return back to the notifications tab. So here you can send the notification to a single device or to a topic or to a user segment. We'll get more into that when I release my full Ionic course, but for right now, we'll just send it to a single device. Click send and you should see it pop up in the emulator. Cool, so that's really convenient, but in most cases we're going to send notifications programmatically using cloud functions. That's what I'll show you next, but first I want to point out that if you're building on iOS, you also need to enable push notifications in your project in Xcode. You also need an Apple developer account and things like that, but that's beyond the scope of this video. What we want to do next is build a cloud function that will notify a user whenever they get a new subscriber or follower or some other important event happens on their account. So run Firebase init functions, which will create a functions directory in the root of your project. I'm using TypeScript for my function, so I'm going to go into the functions directory to the source index.ts file. Then we need to initialize the Firebase admin SDK, and I'm exporting a function called new subscriber notification. This function is going to run whenever we have a new Firestore document created in the subscribers collection. So you could think of this in the same way that you think of YouTube subscribers. What we want to do is notify the owner of that channel whenever they get a new subscriber. We can make this an async function to return a promise, which is required in cloud functions. And then we'll get the data from that document by calling event data data. Each document should have a user ID, which is the owner of the channel, and a subscriber, which is the user who is subscribing to that channel. Then we can use this information to format the actual notification content. So we'll set a title of new subscriber, and then we'll say subscriber name is following your content. You can also add an icon image as well. The next step is to find all the device tokens that belong to a given user. To do that, we make a reference to Firestore, and then we reference the device's collection and filter it by that user ID by saying where user ID equals this user ID. We can retrieve that data one time by calling get on it, and then we'll set up an empty array for each of the tokens that we want to send a message to. Then devices is a snapshot query, so we need to call for each on it, and then for each token in that query, we're going to put it in our tokens array. Then the final step is to just call admin messaging, send to device with that tokens array and the corresponding payload. Now go ahead and deploy your function, and we should be ready to put it to use. In this case, I have my function set up to trigger on the subscriber's collection. So I'm creating a new document in that collection and making sure the user ID matches test user, which we set up in our Ionic app. And sure enough, after we create that document, we get the notification in the device as expected. In the next few days, I'm going to release a full Ionic course that will go into much greater detail on Firebase cloud messaging and give you a solid starter template for building your own native mobile Ionic apps. If you're an active pro member, you'll be able to enroll in that course for free. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.